sweat and toil, work days that stretched from sun to sun, pestilence and crop failure. This was the lot of the early settlers who tamed the wilderness and put it to work feeding the world. Today, farming is an easier, more profitable occupation. Improved crop varieties and scientific methods have skyrocketed farm production. Machines have taken over most of the muscle work, making farm life easier and more profitable. But not everything is better. Look at this pasture. Like many others, it's less productive than the pastures the early settlers provided for their oxen. Overgrazed pastures such as this produce poorly, breed thistles and other noxious weeds which soon choke out the grass and take over the land. They also fight a losing battle with soil erosion. Look at the deep gashes which have marked this grassy slope for destruction. Come late summer, these weary pastures get discouraged, turn brown, become dormant, lose most of their grazing value. All of a sudden, you've got an exercise lot instead of a pasture. The grass really is greener on the other side of the fence. With less and less grass on their menu, your cattle start gobbling more and more high-priced feed, cutting your net profit. Cows grazing poor pasture are apt to be puny and scrubby because the grass they eat has little feeding value. Even if old Bossy doesn't begin to show her ribs, she'll probably cut her milk flow until you have to coax her to give enough to feed the kittens. But pastures can pay, and pay big, if given the same consideration as other crops on your farm. Grass helped to fatten steers at the Illinois Experiment Station farm with one-third less corn. An acre of Ladino clover grass pasture on this same farm put 540 pounds of low-cost gain on ewes and lambs. Hogs aren't natural grazers, but they can use a grass and legume mixture to trim as much as 20% from their feed bill. Of course, no other feed increases the milk flow like nutritious grass. Many dairymen figure that an acre of good pasture under favorable conditions will maintain a cow and enable her to produce from 3,000 to 5,000 pounds of milk during the grazing season. Yes, farm records have proved time and again that it is cheaper to produce milk and meat with good pasture than with large amounts of costly grains and concentrates. There's no secret about the way to give your worn out pasture new life. The Agriculture Extension Service, the Soil Conservation Service, and other agencies have already shown thousands of farmers how to make pasture one of their most profitable crops. In their demonstrations, these experts usually recommend a four-point plan for pasture improvement. First, test the soil and apply needed lime, commercial fertilizer, or manure. Second, rip up the old sod and prepare a good seed bed. Third, seed locally adapted grass and legume mixture. Fourth, safeguard the renovated pasture against overgrazing. Taking soil samples and testing them for mineral content is important in areas where fertilization is necessary. This farmer is taking soil samples from several representative spots in his old pasture. County farm bureaus or other agencies will test your soil samples. These tests indicate the minerals and plant foods your pasture land needs to produce a profitable crop. Land that needs lime or other minerals won't support the legumes in the pasture mixture. Likewise, over-liming or the addition of unneeded plant food is a waste of money. Manure will help to build up the organic content of lazy land, give it strength to produce lush grass, grass chock full of milk and meat-producing nutriments. Blanketing your old pasture with manure 
is a quick, easy job with modern manure handling equipment. Adding superphosphate increases the manure's effectiveness. This farmer is getting ready to spread potash on his pasture. Like lime, nitrogen, and phosphate, potash helps farm animals to maintain their health and makes them grow. Commercial fertilizer and ordinary lime, such as this farmer is loading, have skyrocketed crop yields. They will increase your income from livestock through better pasture. A lime distributor enables you to sweeten sour soil in a hurry. Late summer or fall is usually a good time to apply liming materials. In some areas, good stands of legumes can be obtained by drilling the seed into the pasture without seedbed preparation following the liming operation. Most experts recommend a field cultivator or disc harrow for ripping up the old sod. However, in some conditions, a plow is used to prepare a seedbed for the new pasture mixture. The field cultivator and disc harrow have the advantage of not only doing good work on rough or stony pastures, but of leaving a surface mulch that retards wind and water erosion. Old pasture may be ripped up in late fall or early spring, depending upon the soil and local growing conditions. The sod should be well cut and the roots severed from the soil. This weakens the old sod so it won't choke out the new seeding and provides a mulch type of seed bed for the new legume and grass mixture. Following the field cultivator with a disc harrow assures a more complete kill of the old sod, gives the new seeding a better chance to catch. It's best to work hillsides on the contour. This helps to hold the soil even on steep slopes. Diversion terraces, like the one on the right, carry excessive water from heavy rains around the hillside. The tractor plow is one of the best implements for building diversion terraces. When properly built, such terraces are good security against destructive washing. Choice of grasses to be sown will depend upon your local soil and climatic conditions. It is wise, therefore, to follow the recommendations of soil and pasture experts in your community and to buy your seed from a reliable dealer. Timothy, sweet clover, alfalfa, and alcite clover, used in combination with brome grass, orchard grass, and many others, are commonly used pasture mixtures. All legume seeds should be inoculated just before seeding. This farmer is applying 200 pounds of commercial fertilizer to the acre at seeding time. By using a fertilizer grain drill, he's also able to seed the grass and legume mixture and put in a nurse crop if desired at the same time. The grass seed attachment enables him to plant the alfalfa clover grass mixture in almost any desired quantity per acre. The oat nurse crop is planted from the regular grain compartment of the drill. On heavy soils, grass seed should not be covered more than one half inch. Somewhat deeper planting may be advantageous on lighter soils. The grass seed tubes on this drill can be easily adjusted to release grass seed behind the furrow openers when shallow placement is desired or to plant it at the same depth as the nurse crop if one is used. Following the drill with a drag harrow or roller firms the seed bed and encourages rapid germination by covering all of the seed at an even depth. See how rolling levels the seed bed brings seed and soil particles into close contact, makes it easier for nature to change the face of the land. Remember this pasture? The hilly ground is the same, but the grass has a new look. Coaxed by spring rains and warm days, the new seeding puts down its roots and pops above ground. By May, it's growing faster than the weeds in your garden. Come midsummer, it is tall enough to pasture. And it's a happy herd that romps into a renovated pasture to graze the nurse crop. Some farmers clip the companion crop for hay or wait and harvest a grain crop. 
The important thing is to get rid of the nurse crop before it gobbles too much moisture and stunts the growth of the seed. The nurse crop not only gives you some return from the land while the seeding is being established, but controls weeds and retards erosion. Here's our renovated pasture on its first birthday. Look at that rank growth, topping 11 inches. It's hard to believe that this was once a worn out pasture. This cow's eye view reveals the heavy growth that makes renovated pasture a paradise for livestock, a profit maker for farmers. Livestock love this tender grass. They'll eat it right down to the roots unless you take steps to prevent overgrazing. Dividing your pasture into two or three parts with an electric fence will enable you to move your stock from plot to plot to avoid overgrazing. This rotational grazing encourages quick recovery and regrowth of the new grass. It also enables your livestock to harvest the maximum amount of forage at the height of its feeding value. Tests indicate that legumes and grasses as a team do a better job than either one alone. Here are legumes and grasses working together to produce a better pasture. Legumes supplement the plant food in the soil with nitrogen taken from the air. This nitrogen, in turn, stimulates the growth of the grasses. Bluegrass alone, like that pictured at the left, usually dries up before midsummer. However, the grass and legume mixture at the right provides good pasture far into the fall. Hot dry spells that knock out most pasture grasses hardly phase deep-rooted legumes, which stay green and keep growing by pulling moisture up from the subsoil. A protective mat formed by the thickly growing legume and grass mixture soaks up gully washing rains like a thirsty sponge, anchors life-giving topsoil to the steepest slope. Look at these cows wading in a sea of lush grass. This is cow heaven. Because legumes and grasses work together to add plant food, hoard moisture, and provide constant regrowth, they go a long way toward assuring good grazing from early spring to late fall. In fact, these legume and grass pastures provide feed throughout the winter in some areas. Clipping once or twice a season is a good practice after your pasture becomes established. Clipping prevents weeds from seeding, keeps faster growing grasses from crowding the legumes out of the pasture mixture. Cattle prefer tender, nutritious grass on their menu. If it's growing on the back 40, that's where you'll find them every night. So if you don't have a boy to send after the cows, renovate a patch of meadow near the barn. No matter where it's located, however, a renovated pasture can boost your milk and meat production, slash your labor cost, make farm life easier and more profitable for you and your family. So take a tip from thousands of other progressive farmers who have renewed their weary, worn-out pastures. It's easy to turn grass into gold.